This is Twit. Last week, you know, I um, I started uh, a segment here that actually I it's a tuner I built back in 2013. It's an MFJ tuner kit that uh, was a lot of fun to build, and you know, everybody well. Some folks won't agree with this. Uh, some folks it might be here, but, you know, most everybody needs a tuner if you're going to get on HF. Uh, it just allows a little more flexibility in uh, matching your antenna to your transceiver. It's also a great first build project. Very simple to build, uh, especially with good instructions. And uh, it's a good way to to get started soldering as well. So, Let's take a look at part two of that tuner kit. Last week on Smoke and Solder, we began building the MFJ 941EK HF antenna tuner kit. We built the RF switching assembly and the meter assembly. This week, we're going to complete the tuner by building the T network. We'll mount the inductor and switch assembly. And we want to hold the switch so that it doesn't turn when we do this. And now we've got two mounts down in here to line up with those two holes and put our screws through to mount this down. We'll want to mount the capacitors and these are isolated from the chassis as well. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, I think it's going to be easier if I put this fiber washer up in the hole before I put the capacitor in. And now I'll put the capacitor with the fiber washer in. And now I'll put another one of the three-quarter inch fiber washers on. And then a metal washer and then the nut. Now, we do the same thing with the antenna capacitor. But this time, we're going to use the Teflon washers. Now I'm going to look carefully to make sure that none of these plates are touching each other. This one here on the end got kind of bent a little bit, so I straightened it back out. Now the top coil here has been isolated from all the rest, and they've given us a couple of leads here. What we're going to do is pull these out and away from the front post here. Now this post right here is the stator of the capacitor and we should attach this wire to it. The wire is just a little bit too short so I'll just make a little jumper to fit that on over. Now we'll do the same thing on this side with the wire that's connected to C1. Once again we'll check to make sure we're not shorted against that turn there. The wire coming off of C2 here has got to go right here to the rotor on the tuning capacitor. Now we need to install another bus wire from the rotor here of the antenna capacitor up onto the center of the coil here on the top winding. Now I'm not going to wrap it around because those windings are pretty tight there and I could short out to the one below. Now let's see if that's good and tight there. And nothing shorted out. Now we've got one final connection to make here. And that goes from the looped in at the top of the inductor coil here onto the stator of the transmitter capacitor. Everything looks good. I don't see any shorts on any of the capacitor plates here that are obvious or the inductor windings. And so we can complete the kit. We've just got a few pieces left to go here. Now this is mostly hardware stuff. We need to put this link coupler onto the end of the switch here. That's all the way to the left. And so we want that to point at dummy load. Balance line, coax 1, coax 2, coax 2 bypass, coax 1, balance line, dummy load. So I believe we're good there. Fully mesh the transmitter capacitor and fully mesh the antenna capacitors. That means we'll close them all the way to where they're all the way together there. Install the knobs with the pointers at zero. Now we need to find the home position of the selector switch here. 
So we'll put the knob on there temporarily so we can switch it around. So the way that we can tell when we're at the home position or open position is look at the rear of the switch wafer and the wiper ring and selector tab should be aligned. There's the wiper tab right here. It goes on over to the ring in the center here. And the selector tab is currently on this position. If you watch when I turn it here, you'll see that little silver tab stick out the side there. That should be lined up with the selector tab. Now we're at a known position, and we should turn our knob here to position A. Now we've got two buttons left here. The red one goes on the lamp on off, and the black one goes on our power range switch here. We'll install the cover on the unit later after we've done some testing and calibration. Now let's take a look at the schematic and see what we've built. The section in white here is what we built last week. Here is the input to the tuner and the directional coupler. The directional coupler is essentially a center tap transformer. The forward and reflected signals are induced into the windings of the transformer. Here's a reflected meter circuit. We can see that diode D1 rectifies the RF signal into a DC voltage. Capacitor C7 just moves off the ripple. Resistor R3 reduces the level a little bit. And half of switch 2 selects between two potentiometers that are used to calibrate the 6 and 60 watt ranges. The other half of the meter circuit is essentially the same but for the forward meter. If we look at switch 3, that's the antenna selector, and we can see the top positions of the switch are the bypass mode that simply route the RF straight through to the coax and outputs. The bottom half of the switch routes the signal through the T network. And here's the balance line ballon and the meter lamp circuit. The T network is two capacitors in series with the RF signal, and in between the two is a switched inductor that goes to ground. So here we can vary either capacitor or the inductance of the inductor to adjust the antenna tuning. Now that we've got the tuner complete, next week we'll do the testing and calibration of the unit. If you'd like to build along with us at home, go to mfjenterprises.com and look up the MFJ 941 EK kit. And that is a fun kit. We'll we'll test it out, tune it up next week, and because uh, there are some calibrations that need to be done on it. Interesting side note here: I was looking at the chat room uh, during the uh, last part of that. There, I noticed Burke asked, "What was the round thing in the bottom that went up to the uh, two banana jacks on there?" Well, that's a ballon, and apparently. Uh, Apple does not want you using that word because it will auto-correct it to everything under the sun but ballon if you try to type it in. So uh, anyway, fun kit there, MFJ 941 EK. They put that together just for us here on Smoke and Solder uh, at uh, a request for, uh, you know, some kits that we could build. And that's uh, one that uh, that we came up with. And a uh, great fun little project there. Uh, one that most any ham could use. 